Welcome to Higher Praise. Put your hands together for God. Y'all can do that. Yeah. He's a blessing in the midnight hour when I'm all by myself. You know those times when there ain't nobody to talk to but you and Jesus. You know, you feel like ain't nobody listening anyway. But somehow you feel the creator of the universe cares about you, and he does. And he speaks to you in that still, small voice and says, I'm listening. And you know, God can handle whatever you want to put on him. Can you know that? God can handle whatever you want to put on him. You know, he says, take my yoke for it is easy. And it is light. And I praise God that he's, he's one who accepts when... Um, we give him our burdens. He goes, God goes, I got you. It's no problem. Amen. And I got some uh, prayers I want to, uh, prayer requests I want to go forth. We want to pray for um, uh, Cross Point and their volunteers that have um, gone down to Florida to help with disaster relief. Um, we, we supported them in going down there and feeding uh, so many people. They'll be down there for two weeks. We want to pray for them. Some people from here went, went with them also, and we uh, praise God for that. We want to pray for those who are sick, those who are recovering. Amen. Uh, got a prayer request for a young man named Braxton Gibson, a 14-year-old um, young man who was staying with uh, friends or family and got up to get something to, to drink and I guess uh, passed out and they found him face down and he was blue and everything, but he's in Children's Hospital in Indianapolis. He's 14 years old and we want to um, remember him and his family in prayer. I um, um, also want to um, send a uh, praise report also as we pray for um, what our youth did with the following thing they did this past weekend. I see the picture is awesome. I uh, wasn't able to be there because I was at a funeral. I was, I was um, doing a, a funeral and pray for the Gibson family as they laid one of theirs uh, to rest Saturday. Um, but I saw the pictures, I saw what they did with the kids, and I saw uh, what everything, so I want to um, give a thank you to all of our volunteers and our youth leaders and our children who came out and volunteers who made that happen. Amen. Give God a hand praise for that. Amen. And for um, any other family that's, that's going through something, um, the ones that are traveling back and forth, and we want to pray for our nation pray for leaders. Father, in the name of Jesus, um, you know our spoken and unspoken prayer requests. Um, for those who are in the hospital and those who are underneath the weather, those that are traveling, Father, we pray for those who have laid family members to rest, and uh, we pray for them and their comfort. For this young man and their family, God, that you could go in there and, and, and help this young man to do recovery, Father. Uh, we ask you, God, that you would touch his, his brain and, and his breathing patterns and, and everything and touch the family and give them strength. Let them know, Father, that your Holy Spirit is in the room. And God, that you care about each individual in the room. Father, we um, pray for those who are going through treatments, cancer treatments, and, and any other kind of long-term disability. And Father, there are people waiting for kidney transplants and everything else. God, you know what each individual is going through, and you love us in spite of what state our vessel is in. Father, we want to thank you for, for inhabiting our praise today. God, uh, Holy, Holy Spirit, thank you for, um, for being here. Even though that sometimes with our attitudes we could easily quench the Spirit, God. But I ask, God, that you would uh, forgive us and open our hearts up to that, God, we're open to healing. We're open to salvation. We're um, open, God, to, to changing hearts and minds today, Father, and every day. Father, use us as a conduit or a pipeline to pour out your anointing upon the people. Father, I ask God right now, if any hard hearts in the sound of my voice, that you would soften their hearts today. 
anybody who's anxious or worthy or worried about anxiety that you would calm that today too that they would be able to receive God we pray for back pain knee pain leg pain ankle pain Father, that anything that's, that's uh, hurting or, or stopping your people from being mobile and going forward, we, we back those things up. We ask those bodies to come and correct the way that they were designed by you and that they would function and work the way that they're supposed to work. Father, make us alert today. Make our minds attentive because we know we're in the season of the enemy and he's trying in this October uh, Halloween season, he's trying to, to, to lay hold on our minds, but we shall overcome and we shall prevail. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One more time, give him a hand praise. Fill that for him. Amen. Huh? So I have one more announcement that I forgot to give this morning. Um, is it my birthday is, again? No. It's October. My birthday? Uh, oh, after birthday. I need you to stop. Oh. So it's October, and um, it is Pastor Appreciation Month. Amen. So, yep. Appreciate it. Um, so we were going to oh, have... Oh, thank you. <laughs> you appreciate me. Bishop, help me. Okay. <laughs> um, we were going to have the um, last thing happen today, um, but Richie and I have to go out of town. So next Sunday, immediately following service, we will be having a pastor appreciation dinner. So please stay after. We will have dinner. We will have cake and um, have an appreciation service for the pastors and the other ministers here at the church. Amen? Hey. All right. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> You know, I don't, I, I don't want to say anything, but I think she's sweet on me. She knows she liked me. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's appreciation. Anybody else want to throw out a comment? <laughs> she's like, oh, whatever. See, what, what's wrong with the women? You're supposed to be like, yay. Amen. Uh, anybody on this side visiting for the first time, I just want to say thank you for coming. Anybody in this section for the first time? Everybody veterans, anybody here for the first time? Thank you, honey. Thank you, brother. Thank you for being here. Anybody else in this section for the first time? Anybody over there for the first time? Anybody here? Well, thank you guys for being here. Thank Look, she want to raise her hand. I know I love you too. <laughs> she goes, hey, Pastor. But anyway, <laughs> well, uh, we're just so um, glad that you guys decided to be here and worship with us. We do not take it lightly. You could have been any place in the whole world, but you decided to take out your time to worship with us, and uh, we, uh, we appreciate it, and, um, and Pastor Appreciation Month is nowhere near how much I appreciate y'all, amen, I really do, from the, from the, the cards and the encouragement and the well wishes that we go through, uh, you just don't know, if you're in any kind of ministry, you just don't know what uh, a little bit of someone said they appreciate your sacrifice, what it, what it means, um, I know, you know, it's a shame that we didn't, but I know how much Jesus would have loved it on that time when he was getting beat when someone says, I love you for what you've done for me. And he died anyway. And I just want to say that we could, uh, uh, above all, we appreciate God and everything he's done for us because it's all about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead and release our kids for Children's Church at this time. I uh, really do appreciate it. We're going to let you go on to the kids' zone. Amen. Upstairs and wherever y'all y'all go. Amen. Bless God for you. Amen. Praise God for our volunteers. You know, we couldn't make without our volunteers. They, they help shape the next generation of believers. And it's a, it's a big deal. And I just want to say that I'm not in the club because, you know, if you're, if you're coming from Rushfield, you notice that Dennis got his own billboard. And if you're coming from Walmart, you know that Craig got his own billboard. I mean, we become the billboard church. And I just don't know how everybody got a billboard. Um, we were going to get a billboard for the church, remember? And they had like a, they had like a nine to 12 month waiting list. How Dennis and Craig got a billboard, I have no idea. You got to know people to get a billboard in town. So, you know, Craig and Dennis got their own billboard, and Dennis won a, won a downplay. He come up, <laughs> you see my picture? Yeah, he's like a story high, big bald head on that billboard. So, so we uh, uh, appreciate them, and, and um, don't throw nothing at the billboards, but honk if you see it, like to hear you. Just honk at the billboard, amen? But we, um, praise, praise God, there's a couple things going on, and I like to um, 
um, keep you up, uh, up to date. And um, Wednesday night, uh, Bishop and Doug do an uh, excellent do- job. Doug, Doug gives us uh, what's going on in the world. He gives us the bad news and, news and um, um, Bishop preached the good news. Amen. And um, lets us know what's, what's, what's happening and where we are. And today's no um, different. Um, I got a message for you today, but I got, you know, does anybody want to hear a little bit about the state of where we are? If not, I'll just go on about the, okay, about the up, update a little bit. Um, why we're uh, doing, doing stuff, and well, let me say, um, I'm preaching today about pressing towards the goal, amen? So we must not lose sight of that, pressing towards the goal. Everybody say press. press. That's what we must do, we're called to do. And when you see, you understand what these scriptures are saying because you understand the time we're living in into, uh, we're really going to have to press in on our faith, press in to what God has called us to do. And I'm going to get to that in a um, minute as most of you have heard and you've um, seen in, in, in the news, uh, about a week ago, they gave the United States 25 days before we ran out of diesel nationwide. And that was five, that was, that was five days ago. So they asked the uh, uh, representative of the, of the president, you know, what were, we, what were we doing about that? And they had no response. And to find out that Europe was you know, natural gas and stuff because of Russia. Europe was going to be suffering this year in winter. Well, now Europe, their reserves are filled up to 90 to 90 some percent. And they believe they can weather this, but they're being filled up that much because we're sending them our stuff. Because we want them to keep pressure on Russia. So we're still exporting all this stuff when we're running out. Now, the biggest thing about this, you might say, well, I don't have a diesel car, whatever. Well, diesel is the workhorse fuel. It's what gets your kids to school on the school bus. It's what farmers use to farm. It's what um, brings all your Amazon shipments and your Walmart shipments. Um, It's what big industry of excavators and building supplies rely on is diesel. And they said we have a national reserve of like a million or something like that. But even if they, they released all of our natural reserves of diesel, it would last six hours for the nation. So there could put pressure on other um, um, companies around the southern part of the state to start maybe producing more diesel but then and diesel and jet fuel, but then that takes away from your rugged fuel. And so now we're at like 20 days before they decide what they're going to do. Now, it's affecting local because everybody know that IMI here in town that gives you your concrete and stuff, they ain't answering the phone no more. You cannot buy concrete. If you're doing something at your home, they will not sell you concrete. If you go to another place outside of IMI, they won't sell it to you either. They have a list. If you're not a contractor on that list, you can't buy concrete because the crete is not coming in because... The, the trucking's not bringing it in. So you can call IMI all you want, but they ain't answering your call. And unless you're on that uh, uh, list of a contractor, you are not getting anything poor do-it-yourself. That's, that's now. Now, the United States, has we have rushed to move our nuclear warheads to Europe right now. We're rushed to move our nuclear warheads to Europe. And in some of the um, attacks that uh, Russia is upset that they said that Britain helped Ukraine formulate, now Russia is now stopping grain shipments from coming out of Ukraine, which Ukraine was one of the biggest grain producers. So now they're complaining because now it's going to aid or quicken the global food shortage. This happened this week. And that was re, um, the, about the diesel fuel run out. That was also reported on Fox News, CNN, and Newsmax. 
uh, the rush to our nuclear warheads to Europe. That was re reported on, on Newsmax and other um, world uh, news outlet. And, um, and, a, um, and then, the, um, as we know, the rivers Euphrates have been reported, and it is drying up because of the drought and everything. And the Bible clearly says when the rivers Euphrates dry up, the, the uh, kings of the North Shore walk across the rivers Euphrates on dry land to wage war. And we're there. We're, we're there. Um, China has stepped up its, um, its, its runnings of its jets over um, Taiwan. We have responded, and we have responded also to Russia that we are now doing our own and I don't know the difference, so excuse me, um, our own um, nuclear practices, which means we're running our, our premium jets with other countries and we're doing certain uh, maneuvers to, that we would only do if we were at nuclear war. So they're now doing those practices over there in that, in that region. And certain other countries' um, borders have been, been closed. We're dealing with a lot of um, um, refugees from Ukraine and other, and other countries. Um, there is uh, unrest still in Israel. Israel may be getting another prime minister, the prime minister of, um, uh, as, as we know, in Europe um, has, has changed. And now, and I will have some footage, hope if I get some footage, of uh, the celebration of the Commonwealth, because now they don't have a queen, they have a king. Remember the Queen Elizabeth died? Now they don't have a queen, they have a king. And in prophecy, that means something different. And then we um, see where we have them having a, a festival, which is underneath the king, where everyone is um, bowing down to this huge bull, like in the days of Moses. And it's like a big Olympic event, and they made this motorized bull, and they uh, deliver um, crystals and different things to the bull, and the bull bow his head, and all the people in the arena bow down to, to the bull. So you can't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. And I'm just hitting it, and you can get more, more stuff coming when you come on Wednesday night, and, and Doug um, will tell you some other different things. And we know there's certain things happening in, in Israel. I report that, too. Um, there's all in the news. There's something called um, Israel. They call him Israel's Messiah. And um, they call him a certain name, and he's a rabbi who has, who has a young rabbi who has memorized all the Talbot and the Torah, and, they're just, and they, are, um, they are claiming miracles unto him. So you go on there, uh, it's a nuke, I think what they call him, whatever, and um, there are a bunch of testimonies about healings and stuff, and they're thinking that he may be their Messiah. And so you go on there, Google uh, Israel's Messiah. You'll see video footage of him. You see all the other rabbis around him. They're lighting fires, and they're dancing around the fires because they had a Chinook. They, um, that's, what they, that's what they call him. Um, I'll get more into that later on, but that's happening now as we speak, and then we talk about the last times where Israel would receive someone they called their own Messiah. Now, they're receiving this guy, but they didn't receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So this is where we are now. And so I want to uh, express press towards, towards um, the goal. And, and the reason why I'm saying this is because they, it's, it's going to get very, very tricky from this time forward. Because there's going to be a lot of effort to deceive. The Bible says in the last days, if it was possible, even the elect would be deceived. Do not be moved by shock and awe. Do not go in the desert looking for Christ. Do not do this and this and that. God's going to find you. God is not lost. You don't have to find him. He'll find you when he calls you. Oh, man. Keep that going in your mind. Just keep that going in your mind. Because whatever it is, because you're going to have, because you may have an instinct to go on a pilgrimage to bow down to some man or some woman. Don't. I don't care if there is a mega church leader, one of your favorites, and they get derailed. And they say, well, we're going to go see this guy. We're going to go bow down. We're going to make sure. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. 
Don't sell everything you have for a cult leader or, any, or, or anything else. Jesus is the same Jesus today, same Jesus tomorrow, same Jesus everything else. Uh, do not suffer from FOMO. You know what that is, don't you? FOMO, fear of missing out. <laughs> do not succumb under that. Amen. God got you. He knows where you are. He knows um, when he's coming and what he's going to do. You do not have to wave your hands like a, like a, a crazy person on a roof to get saved. God desperately wants to save you. Amen. And let's, uh, um, let, me, let me take you to uh, Philippians 3, um, verse 12. And I think these things are, are important to talk about because to let you know that the Bible is relative to today and that God didn't miss anything, okay? And he knows where you are, right? And I'm starting at verse 12 in Philippians 3. It says, not that I have already obtained. It's my right, probably right. Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on. Everyone say press. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do know, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching towards those things that are ahead, I press, everyone say press, towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now, before I go any further, just let me let me say this. Why I had you say press two times? Press, you got to understand, if you're pressing, there's some resistance. What are you pressing against? In the Western country, and I, and I blame some of our, 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 our most extreme charismatic movement, I blame some of them for that, because we think everything must be like a slide. There ain't no pressing. It's God. It just smooth. It was smooth. Everything happened, it was smooth. I mean, I haven't seen that in the Bible. I haven't seen that in the Bible. It, 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 it sure enough wasn't smooth, smooth sailing for Jesus, and you ain't better than the master. But if you have to press through some of these doors, you just think, some people are thinking, well, that ain't God. I'm not going to press for that. You know, that's too much work. But the thing about it is we're called to press in. Amen. And, and the thing is, if you don't know about pressing, you sure enough don't know about travailing. And, and, and see, travailing means that sometimes you stay up all night and pray and, 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 and go at something. It means that you ain't going to let hold of it. That means you, you praying for your adult child, even though they don't seem to be nowhere near, near saved, but you sitting there and you travailing, you interceding. See, if you don't know about pressing, you don't know about travailing, and you don't know about interceding. And if you don't know about travailing and interceding because you ain't pressing, both of those are pressing functions of the church. I, I'm sorry, you can't, you can't be a prayer warrior and not know about pressing. you got to press in. That means even when there don't seem to be enough room, you still step in. Listen, don't let people on the subway know, about, know more about pressing in than you do. I'm sorry, if you got to be to work at 8 and the subway seem to be full, try them not to get you to press in. Like, excuse me, excuse me. You be like, yeah. All the way to work because, you know what, you ain't getting docked. You're going to press in. You don't know about press. You about, uh, we about to come into a press in time. Oh, let, let Black Friday happen. And they got your stuff on sale. Shoot, you'll, you'll pray. You know what? They'll tell you a uh, six feet. Ain't no six feet on Black Friday. You'll be like, mm-mm. You risk COVID, the flu, RSV. Spit in your face because you want to get to sale. But in the flesh, you can press in. Hey, let them be a concert. Listen, they, they, had, they had over 300-some people injured, 150 people killed at a Halloween thing in South Korea. And it's weird to see how people trample people like they're mindless. They're coming and people just keep moving in like this. I mean, it's like a mob. And you have some people who would climb up on poles and try to get people up. They, they literally stepped on other people. And then they show videos of, you know, I mean, 20, 30, 40 people all doing life-saving measures on all these young people because they were at a parade. Don't, don't uh, 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 a um, Halloween parade. Listen, don't, 
don't be fooled that that demonic Halloween spirit was all over that thing. And, and they said it was like a slow tidal wave because you saw them and people weren't running. They were just moving like this, just kept moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. And then people fell down. They would just run over them. Just ran over them. And, and then we have a hard time pressing in on God. So we must press for the spark. And even Paul says, you know, I have not, a, not, a, not obtained. I'm not saying I have attained. What I'm saying is I might not be there, but I'm pressing in to get there. Yeah. You see, so you may be thinking like, you know, I haven't arrived. You may be thinking that, you know, um, I'm not the Christian that I, I need to be. Well, some of you stop your Christian growth because you stop pressing. I know I didn't get to where I am in my Christian experience. My wife did. not I know Bishop didn't. I don't know. I don't know Mike or anybody else didn't get there. We got there by pressing. You got to press in. You know what? Even when you're not invited, you got to press in. I, I, you know, you understand, you know, I got I, I to gotta press into my Bible study. I got to, I, I got to press into church. You know, um, a lot of times I went, I went places where I wasn't necessarily invited. And some, some people were surprised I was there. But I said, I heard God was being preached, so I got to show up. You got, you got to understand, and, and, and a lot of you, we don't press because we don't, in America, we don't feel like it. In other countries, feel like it's not an option. I had times like, oh, Lord, I just, don't, I just don't feel like it. Jesus, Jesus know my health. That's what we call press. There's some things I was so tired, whatever, but I went and pressed in, and God never failed me to show up and to, uh, and to bless me. Because most things to Jesus aren't a straight shot, but they're necessary because God takes us to different places along the way. Yeah. Amen. Because um, Bishop called me. He goes. He goes. Well, we. You know, I, I gotta go. I, I gotta go from. Where'd you, where'd you go? You go from here to Atlanta, was it? And then to Paris, and then from Paris to Armenia. Somebody. Asked. I said, dude. I said, that's a lot. Well, he said, yeah. I said, I said, hey, you got a straight, straight flight? And you know what he told me? He goes, I don't think they do those anymore. And in most places, it's hard. Some of you haven't took a straight flight unless it was from here to Chicago or something like that. Because a lot of times, there's a lot of different detours just to get to where you need, need to be, just enough to shake your interest off so that you might say, I ain't doing that. But in a, in, a, in, a, in a loving, holiness world, everything will be a straight shot. But we ain't living in one of those. We ain't living in one of those. Listen, it, uh, I know my ministry, my calling wasn't a straight shot. Was yours? <laughs> it wasn't a straight shot. But we had to press in. So do not get discouraged when you say, God, I want to go here, but you got you to gotta lay over. You got to stop right here for a minute. There's a purpose for you stopping right there for a minute because maybe God wants you to do something. God wants you to say something. God wants you to experience something. God just wants you to take a, take a breath or God says, well, I'm still preparing this for you here, so I'm going to lay you over here. You see what I'm saying? You're going to get here, but by the time you get there, so everything was, was prepared because you know what? God strategically worked it out for you. And so we have to understand, we have to keep pressing. I, 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 I just hurt to see that so many of us give up before the goal line. Some of us give up, and it's right, we're, we're right in view of it. We can, we can actually see it, and we decide to sit down. You know, and we have to understand that if God has begun something in you, he's going to finish it in you. If he begun a good work, he's going to finish it in you. Now, some of you said, well, he's been doing this good work for a long time. That's because you sat down on him. You'd have done been through what God has called you to get through. But some of y'all, see, some of y'all go through tribulation, and, uh, and, and tribulation is this. See, instead of going through tribulation, you guys decide to write out tribulation. There's a difference. Writing out tribulation means, well, I'm in tribulation. I must be, I might be as comfortable 
as I can. So you're going to build a fortified house so you can stay in the midst of the eye of the hurricane instead of going through it. And listen, if you don't think, if you don't think that, uh, we, we can show you on, on the natural. There are usually hundreds of thousands of people in Florida every year who write, out, write them out. Write them out. And there's usually hundred and, uh, hundreds of thousands of people who put other people at harm to go and get them because they made that bad, bad choice. And says, we're going to stay in it instead of get delivered from it. You hear, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And, it was, and what's, what's so funny is no hurricane has taken um, Florida by, by, by surprise in decades. That's right. That's right. The last one, they knew a couple weeks ahead of time. Well, we're going to be coming in. They'll tell you the day it hits. God gives us those warnings before those hurricanes hit our life so you can avoid them, you can step out of them. You say, brother, this is, this is about to happen. This is what's, what's, what's going to happen. And, and if our government doesn't do anything about, about diesel or something like this, he gave us, you know, a month warning said, we're running out. You know, and those are what hospital generators run on, every, everything else. Some of y'all got diesel trucks and going, Ooh. But we must understand there's things that we could do maybe to lessen it, and I hope that they, that they do it. But it is a reality of what's going on. And a lot of times we don't believe it because we are the land of plenty. You know, um, we, you have never, ever really, instead, in, in, to the last Great Depression or famine, people who are alive on the earth today, a lot of people haven't experienced empty grocery stores or empty things. I mean, we, uh, we freak out when the toilet paper get low. Ooh, toilet paper low. And you come back and say, well, they got another truck yesterday. Yeah, but it was low yesterday. You know, we, we, we have to um, understand that these things um, may, be, may be coming and they may be touching us, several things that are touching us. But you must press through this and understand that God is who he said he is. And he has not left you without recourse. He has not left you without recourse. Do not let fear overtake you. Do not let worry over, overtake you. God has us do what you can, do what you will. But God will protect us. And verse 15 says, therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already obtained, let us by the same rule, let us be the same mind. Now, when it talks about mature, it's not talking about your earthly age. He's talking about those, if, if you are mature in your faith and you are understanding, let this mind be in you that you press towards. If you are mature, you press towards. It means that you go in for your, your blessing. It means you come in, you, you, you just asking for your healing. You being bold, you asking for your healing. You asking for your, your, your babies. Now I'm at the, at the point, even for some, that I say, go ahead and thank God for the salvation of the young people in your life. They may not be there yet, but calling those things is not as though they were. So what you do is say, God, thank you for saving my son. Thank you for saving my daughter. Thank you for doing that, God. And start praising God. If you've already asked him to do it, then praise him for what he's about to do or praise him for what he already did. Because you said, what are you doing? I said, I'm pressing. I said, I said, well, every time I thank God for saving my children, I remind him that, that there's work to do over there. I remind him, God, put... Put those saved folks around my children. God, uh, let their boss be saved. Let the person in the cubicle next to them be saved. God, let someone reach out to them. You know, I'm pressing in. I'm interceding. I'm travailing for them. But some of us can't be bothered for that because we're too busy. It don't, it, it don't fit, in, fit into our schedule. But God said you it, it better, it better dig in. Let me, let me jump and take you to Romans, Romans 8. Romans 8, 13. Romans 8, verse 13 says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will. It's okay to say it. It ain't, gonna, it ain't the boogeyman. It ain't going to jump out and get you. Say, 
For if you live according to the flesh, you will what? Die. You ever think, I wonder, I wonder what, he, what he meant. You know, death is a big, you know, what do you mean? But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Now he's talking about living in Christ. You cannot live in the flesh and have the renewed life of Christ because that will die. But if you live in the Spirit, you will, you will put the deeds of the body to death. So what that's saying is the more you live in the Spirit, the less you fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. See, and I know some people hard. That's a, that's a that's a that's a hard one, ain't it? But what it is saying is we need to press in to be more spiritual, not less spiritual. Yeah. Amen. See, listen, there are Christians who want you to be less spiritual because you be because you talking you talking among above their heads. You see, um, if you talk to Bible scholars, when the when the, the Bible was written. Um, not like today, they didn't de- uh, departmentalize uh, the natural world and the spiritual world. In the days that the Bible was written, they mingled the two. They, you know, there were spiritual things happening in, in the natural. And, and here we say, okay, that's just a whole spiritual world. That's one, one area. And this is the whole natural world. That's another area. And if, in the authors of the um, Bible in the uh, New Testament, in Old Testament, they said they, they were side by side. You know, when they were warring, they, you know, they said, I war in the flesh, I war in the spirit. You know, I do this. So they consider it side by side. So basically, there is a spiritual aspect to this. And, and we're, you know, God is a spirit. He, and so if we're, if we're not in this world, then the, as far as worshiping spirit, he said we must be, he must be worshiping spirit and truth. So God, when you do worship, he expects you to be spiritual in your worship. But we try hard and we do it. We worship in our flesh. Worried about who's looking at us. About, but if you worship him in your spirit, it's a whole other different level of reaching Jesus. So we need to be more spiritual, not less spiritual. But people say, don't be so heavenly minded that you know earthly good. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when it comes to the things of God, you need to be mindful and spiritual. When it comes to the things of the world, you need to realize you're in the world. The world doesn't love you. The world's trying to take advantage of you. And it should be um, to, to be um, loving and simple as a dove, but wise of a, as a serpent. Amen. Know your surroundings, where you are, but all your dealings with God, you need to be spiritual. And the problem is the church has tried to back up on our spirituality and say, well, let's make it more, more manageable. It's you're, uh, you're, you're better politically if you're this. Uh, have you noticed that a lot of the uh, political or world leaders uh, maybe identify as Christian but not so much spiritual? Because it doesn't, it doesn't play good. On the public thing, because uh, the public media ha- doesn't know what to say if you're spiritual. They don't know. Oh, oh. So they say. So you believe? You know? Could you could you see this on CNN or something like that? So you're trying to tell me by your faith, and you want to be you know the next president, or, or you want to be the governor. So you're trying to tell me you believe in something called the Holy Spirit. You believe in spirits. Could you see how that would play? Like, yeah. Oh, uh, well. Do you really want someone who believes in ghosts? To be a leader, someone who's not in their right mind. Do you believe the Holy Spirit can take control? So you're going to try to serve the government through your biblical beliefs. Yeah, see, you see how that doesn't, that doesn't play. So they want a homogenized, they want a carnal Christian, a worldly Christian, who are on the scenes, who deny things of the faith. Amen. And now... Church hierarchy leaders are, are coming out, you know, refusing, the, the Catholic Church is re- refusing um, communion to certain um, high-ranking officials because of their um, stance on abortion and other things that are, that are contrary to the church. They reported that for a minute. They don't talk about it no more because they still say, you know, I'm Catholic, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And the, Catholic, and, the, and the bishop of the Catholic Church is like, don't come here and try to take communion because you don't speak for us. See, we have to 
understand that we need to become more spiritual. If you become more spiritual, when you watch the news, the news takes on a different glow. It takes on a, a different route because if you look at it through spiritual eyes, you're like, oh, I see what's going on. And you don't fall for the lie. And, um, and let me go back to verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. If you're led by the Spirit, you are a reflection of your daddy. Who God is a spirit, must be worshiped in spirit truth. I told you that. Verse 15 says, for you do not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom you cry out, excuse me, Abba, Father. So listen, why do you say you not receive the spirit of bondage again? Because you were already in bondage when, when you got saved. You got set free from that bondage. So when God gives you, God's not trying to bind you again. He's trying to set you free. So that's why people who are not saved thinks the Bible tells you what you can't do. Because they look at it as bondage. But when you are saved, it says I've been set free because now I have a right to the tree of life and I'm not bound to the things that I do in my flesh. That's why the world looks at it like, oh, that's just a bunch of rules. It's trying to take, a, take your fun away. No, it says I'm trying to liberate you from the darkness of this world so you can apprehend the light. You've been set free. But do you see what the world's doing? Do you see what the world's doing? That's why I have that spirit, and I can say, Abba, Father. I can say, God, my Father, my Redeemer, my friend. I can go in there, but when I'm in bondage, I can't say any of that. You see, you, gotta, you, you don't understand. You, I, I know you can't remember because you've been saved for a while. But I remember in my early 20s when I couldn't stand in the middle of the sanctuary and say I was a friend to God. I, I, I remember a time where I couldn't stand in the middle of sanctuary and testify about how good God was because I didn't notice how good he was in my life because I had a veil on me. There was a time in your life where you wouldn't stand up or you wouldn't do anything unless you saw what was in it for you. What was in it for me? This whole unselfish thing where you're doing, doing for others, that didn't come from you. That came from the Spirit of God. Oh, I, before I was saved, I wish you would drop $20 in front of me. I dare you. I dare you. Before I was saved, you know, don't drop your rent money. Your rent money became my rent money. <laughs> I'll be like, woo, look at that there. Somebody get paid. Don't look at me like that. Y'all know what y'all did. Y'all know what y'all did. Amen. You weren't looking around trying to find out whose this was and what's, uh, and what's going on. Oh, before you were saved, let someone talk about your friend that you know was not true. You're going to be silent. You're like, mm. But now you're saved. You say, no, no, no. I was there. I know that's not true. I know that's not true. You need to quit talking about that. See, that is because you have Christ in you. Without Christ in you, ooh, you a little devil. <laughs> you are. You a little imp without Christ. You're, 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 you know, you, you, you try to take advantage. You're looking for loopholes. You're looking, you, you know, um, you, was, you was probably Sue happy. You would sue anybody. You sued people so much that they called you Sue. <laughs> Amen. You're going to find any, any kind of loophole, anything. Some of y'all were the kind of people who would go up to a restaurant and lay down and swear that you fail. To try to get your stuff for free. Look, y'all can act like, okay, okay, listen, listen, listen. Y'all act like that wasn't you. Okay, maybe you didn't do that, but maybe you would kind of let a lie go on and spin a, a little tale into your advantage. Yeah. Maybe you would do something to make people think about you better that wasn't, wasn't true. Or maybe you let other people take the fall for you when you knew that you did it, but you wouldn't say anything, so they blamed somebody else. As long as they weren't blaming you, you let them blame that person instead of saying, no, it was me. Maybe you were that person say, I'm a, say I'm, a good, I'm a good person, but we go to your house, there's all this stuff you stole from your job that got their logo on it that ain't yours. <laughs> oh, see, okay, now I'm, now I'm hitting closer to home. 
You know, you the person like, I work, I work for Reed. I said, yeah, I can tell. Look, there's a, there's a table that says Reed on it. There's a picture. There's a bunch of pens that say Reed on it. And, there, and you know, why is this box? Ain't even open yet. It says, it says to Reed. Well, they had a bunch of it. They ain't going to miss it. <laughs> Amen. Maybe that was you. See, see, see we, 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 we're getting to that, to that, that part that you, that you think you entitled because they got 10 of them and you say they won't miss nine, but they needed 10. So you think you entitled because they got more than one. Amen. Maybe while your neighbor ain't around, you stealing stuff off your neighbor property. He don't miss it. He don't even use it right. Maybe, maybe you the one that borrowed tools and then engraved your name on somebody else's tools. Talking about it mine now. Amen. But we got to press to be more spiritual and less fleshly. Amen. 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 We got to remember the goals, why we're here. God has birthed us to do good works. He's birthed us to be a blessing, not a curse, to not be a, 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 a hindrance. Some of you are so deep in your sin, you get so personal, and, and no matter who it is, anybody spiritual, you want to tell everybody, it ain't none of your business, to the point that you get so busy, you, you try to tell God, he up in your business. God, like, God, ain't none of your business now. Mind your business. And God's like, you are my business. You know, that's why you feel that conviction, because God all up in your Kool-Aid. You're like, you know, God, stop it. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I know, but, you know, this is one time. God's like, don't do it. Don't do it. And and we need to have this love for our, our, our fellow Christians. You know, people may go to different churches, but you need to love them. You still need to love them because they're part of the body. They're not any different than you. If everybody, if, if they're serving Jesus Christ as crucified, dead, and buried, and born of the virgin birth, and they're doing the good things of Christ, you do not make their ministry more difficult. You aid them. Amen. You aid them. I know I'm getting some weak, 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 weak reports, but... We do that. We support other ministries. If they're doing the will of the gospel, we support other ministries. Now, we get supported sometimes. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. But that's not why you do it. You do it because in the end, God is to be glorified. Amen. Amen. And it's like this in verse 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then what? Heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. Christians suffer. We do. I don't need to preach that. I'm preaching to the choir. Everybody knows that you have something that you're suffering with. You may have a person you suffer with. Or maybe so. Well, she said amen. Or maybe you got somebody that you suffer I didn't, I didn't think I was going to come, come through as clear as it did. But anyway, <laughs> amen, and you got things that you're looking to and that you're, that you're um, not able to do that when you were younger or older, but you suffer things, but God seems to get you through. As long as you have, as long as you have breath, is he, is he Lord? Is he Lord? See, and I don't mean to get, get down all up, in, all up in your face and talk to you like this, but this is where the power is. In the spirit, this is where the power is. When, as you as believers, are you going to give the Holy Spirit its rightful place? It's not a it. It's not a thing. Because it and a thing can't be grieved. When are you going to give the Holy Spirit his rightful place in the Godhead? When are you just going to bask and just, just have tears of, of worship, of glory, and say, God, you're so good? I don't care if you got to go in the woods and do it, do, it, do it by yourself, but make a connection with God and his spirit. Make a connection with God before it's too late because that's what gives you your second wind. That's what gives you the power. That's what sends you out is that spirit of God. That spirit of God is what gives you discernment. But if you don't know about pressing in, there's a lot of gifts that God has given us that deals with pressing, that deals with pushing in. And a lot of us, if you will not press, you won't receive. It's funny how we go and we um, look for which one open. We go and we look, you know, and you get thirsty, right? It goes, well, is there a machine down the hallway for your hospital or wherever? Yeah, I'm going to go machine. So you, um, so you pay and you um, put the money in. 
and you look and you check what you want. And some of you may look and you expect a machine to 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 read read your mind and you think, well, why hasn't my beverage come out? Or why haven't my sandwich why haven't something come out? But the thing about it is you don't get anything unless you press something. And when you look and you say, what I want is like, it, it, it's, it's like A9 or something. So you press A9, and what you've pressed, actually, you receive. But if you don't press something, you don't receive nothing. Even though it was paid for. Jesus paid the price, but if you ain't pressing, you ain't receiving. You hear, you hear what I'm saying? So you have all these things. You said, boy, I would sure like to have that. I am sure hungry. He says, it's paid for. Go get you some. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then you watch other people press in, and they walk away with stuff. And you go, I wish, boy, what you got? That's awful good. Them chips good. And you, they just sitting there looking at him and says, get you some. I said, I don't know. I don't know if I should. I don't know. Some of you too, some of you are too holy to press. Talking about, I don't know. Where's the sanitizer at? Yeah, I tell you what, you better press if you're hungry. You better press if you're hungry. So you look and you see, you're like, beep, beep, beep. And then it comes out, and you're just amazed. You're like, oh, my God. I got something. So what happens next time around, you know you will receive. So next time around, you've been taught to what? Press. And when you're in need, guess what you come up? Press. And then what you do is, because you press in, you show your kids. Here, mommy done put something in. Now go and pick something. Now then you pass it down to the next generation. You said, now this is what you do. Now press what you want. Then all of a sudden, you got a whole family full of what? Pressers. So now it doesn't matter if it's the vending machine in the hospital, the vending machine at the football game, the vending machine at the high school. You ain't been taught by somebody to press. So when they're thirsty, mm, Jesus, when they're hungry, you got to understand, they already know how to press. Some know how to press so much that we that we put it on from generation to generation. They don't even have instructions anymore on the machines. That is, say all they have is where the money goes, how much stuff cost, and where the change come out. They don't have to say, okay, a long thing. Well, if you want some, press this and then stand back. You know, they, they ain't on there. Because it's been entrenched in you, depressed. So what I'm trying to tell you, it goes along through a lot of things. That same press, you can't get gas unless you press it. Some of you can't get in a certain door unless you're pressing. So that's been ingrained, so now it goes across the whole gamut of our society. But yet somehow the church is mispressing in the sanctuary. Push on what you need from God. If you need healing, press on it. Push in. If you need peace of mind, push in on it. You, you, you see where I'm going? If you need love, you need to push on that. You need to let God know that you're committed and that God knows what you need and you know what you want, want from God. We have too many Christians wandering around aimlessly. With their hands empty, mad, and spiteful at the people who got their hands full. And the people who got their hands full are trying to hold classes to teach the people whose hands are empty, but the people whose hands are empty don't show up to the classes to the people whose hands are full. Let me teach you how to receive from Christ. Let me teach you the things of God. And those who are empty in spirit are empty in soul. They avoid those, they avoid those classes with, 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 with the gusto, but yet have the hate for the people who are, who are, who are full. Yeah. Amen? Amen? It's, all, it's all through society. Instead of saying, how do I be successful? We're saying, no, take all the money from the rich people. Give it to me. You don't want to know how to be successful. You don't want to know how to do that. You, you don't, if, if, if a billionaire, I'll tell you what, if a billionaire, if I had a billionaire and I held a class right here to tell you if you can get up $1,000, how to invest and how to triple and do your money, if I held a business thing here, 
nobody would show up. But if I said, you know what, I'm bringing a billionaire here, and we're going to teach you how to, get, how, how to get his money, and he's going to give it to you before you leave the building, it would be packed. It's the same way, like the African proverb, if I'm giving away fish, you're coming. But if I'm going to teach you how to fish so you can feed yourself for a lifetime, you ain't showing up. But God did the heavy lifting. He's giving and he's showing and teaching you how to walk this out. He's teaching you how to live saved and victorious. He's teaching you how to, to teach others. Will you show up for Jesus? Would you show up for your deliverance? Will you, listen, to be the head and not the tail, it takes something. Christ says, I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. Some of y'all just wagging like a tail instead of seeing like the head. You want discernment? See, in the head is the thinking, is the discernment, is the logic. The tail only goes where the head's going to go. The, the, the tail don't have a say-so in where it's going, but the head does. And God says, I will make you the head and not the tail. He'll give you discernment. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you knowledge, and he'll take you to where you need to be. Amen. But you cannot do that without Jesus. Well, I took up enough of your time. I don't want y'all talking about how I'm preaching too long, but let's stand. If you ever wondered how you could support Higher Praise Worship Center ministry, you can do text to give. Just text the word give and the dollar amount to 765-221-8363. We really do appreciate your support.